Hello everyone. This is Adish. I'm a grade 10 student from Mumbai. Hello everyone. In this video, I will go over my solution for the problem named similar heights taken from the starters contest. This problem is easy because you only need to know the map data structure in order to understand my solution. So in this problem, we are basically given chef who's teaching a class of N students at Hogwarts. He groups students with the same height together for an activity. So some students will end up being in a group by themselves because they are their frequency in the array is only one. Now what chef needs to do is he needs to increase the heights of students with frequency only one. And in order to make sure that they have frequency, their new heights have a frequency greater than or equal to two. So we need to print what is the minimum number of students whose heights must be increased in order to ensure that each and every element has frequency greater than or equal to two in the final array. Let's take a look at the examples. In the first example, when all the elements have frequency greater than or equal to two, already in the beginning, we will print zero because no updates are required. In the second example, when only one element has a frequency of one, we perform only one operation of increasing that elements height to be equal to two, which is the frequency of all the other elements. And since this takes only one operation, we'll print one. In the next example, which is exactly the same as the first example, we will print zero because all elements have frequency greater than or equal to two in the beginning itself. And in the last example, which is similar to the second example, in terms of the fact that each of these elements have frequency one, we will notice that we need to pair elements together. So we pair one with two, three with four, and these two elements with five. So that's why it takes one, two, and three operations in order to make sure that all the students are in groups of size greater than or equal to two. So we will print three in that case. In general, the key idea is that we need to consider elements which only have frequency one, and we can find out these elements using a map data structure to store the frequencies. We will also use a variable called max frequency which represents the element with the maximum frequency, which will come in handy later. And now let's look at some cases. Let's consider the case when the count of the number of elements which have frequency one and which are alone in chef's grouping is if that count is greater than or equal to two, then the key idea is that you only need to pair elements together. You do not need to think too much. Just pair one with two three with four and in case there is a leftover element include that leftover, leftover element in the last group. So the number of operations required is always going to be count divided by two ceiling. So if you consider another example where you have the elements one, two, three, four, then it's always optimal to pair one with two, three with four. If you have another element, so let's say you have five, six, uh, again, you'll pair one with two, three with four, five with six. And if you have another element, then you can pair six with seven and five with seven. So this re still requires only one more operation. And that's why count divided by two ceiling will always give you the number of operations required to make all elements in groups of size at least two. So that's why we will just print count divided by two ceiling, which is the same as count plus one over two integer division. So we will do this in the case when count is greater than or equal to two. If count is equal to one, then there is a special case which we need to consider carefully. But if count is zero, we can just print zero straight away. So these two cases are taken care of when count is greater than or equal to two or when count is equal to zero. Now let's consider the hardest case when count is equal to one. This case is especially hard because if you consider the element X, which is the element with frequency one, then it could be the case that X is the largest element in the array. And if X is the largest element in the array, then we need to choose a smaller element in order to make the smaller element equal to X. So we cannot decrease X. We cannot decrease X. We can only increase X. And that's why the solution gets a bit complicated. In the case when count is sufficiently big, we could always make a smaller element equal to a larger element and hence merge both of them together. However, in this case, X is the only element which is left. And that's why we can't make a smaller element equal to X unless we consider the elements which have a frequency greater than or equal to two. So if we choose a smaller element and make it equal to X, there's a danger 
that if the frequency of the element is equal to 2, the frequency will become 1. So it will go from 2 to 1. And then the element will become a lone pair. And uh, basically, it, it will become alone. And you only need to, uh, you, you need to increase the alone element as well and make it equal to x. So this means that actually two operations will re be required, not one operation. So when will the frequency equal to 2? So, so we can solve this problem using max frequency. We can find out the maximum frequency of A. If the maximum frequency of a smaller element is, is greater than 2, we only need one operation. However, if the maximum frequency is equal to 2, then we will require two operations. One operation will make A equal to X, and the second operation will make the second occurrence of A equal to X. And hence, the answer will always be 1 or 2 when X is the largest element. When X is a smaller element, obviously we only need one operation in which we make X larger and make it equal to one of the other elements which are already in groups of size greater than or equal to 2. So that's why this is the only border case when two operations may be required. So this is the border case. Otherwise, everything else is straightforward. So now I'll show you the code which implements the same idea of storing the frequencies using a map data structure and finding the max frequency to handle the border case when the single element appears uh, as, uh, as frequency 1 and when it is the largest element in the array. So in the code, for each test case, I take in the value of n. I store the heights in the h vector. I store the frequencies of each element. And I update the frequencies in this manner. And once I store each and every element and the frequencies, I store the max frequency and the count of elements with frequency 1. Once I have the count of elements, if the count is not equal to 1, then the count will be 0, in which case we'll print 0 or it will be greater than or equal to 2, in which case we'll print count plus 1 over 2. So this is the case when uh, when uh, the count is not equal to 1. If count is equal to 1, we'll consider the largest element. If the largest element doesn't have frequency 1, then we can print 1 because we know that the largest element is not the lone pair, is not the uh, alone element. Otherwise, we need to consider the case when the largest element is the alone element and we need to consider max frequency. If max frequency is greater than 2, we can make sure that a smaller element is equal to the largest number in one operation without disturbing the number of occurrences of the smaller element. However, if all elements have frequency equal to 2, then this means that uh, we need to perform two operations of increasing both the elements and making them equal to x. So that's why we print 2 because in the worst case when all elements have frequency 2, we will need two operations. So you can verify that this code gets accepted. And if you have any doubts, do leave them in the comments down below. Thank you.